Shut up and sit down. Welcome, everybody, to the 3 POA Podcast, episode 11. We're talking R-rated toy lines tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Laser Pants. I'm joined, as always, by my buddy, Desert Rat, a.k.a. Analog Toys, a.k.a. Tony Roberts. What's going on, man? Hey, Ryan, big fan, big fan. <laughs> you are. You are a big fan. I've, I've, I've been struggling this morning. I've had a lot of... Um, technical difficulties in in here but we're here we're ready to do the show i'm good to go right on bobby my other co-host with his what is that coffee it's called i'm exhausted today um a lot of long hours at the office here and then uh my wife and daughter are sick my son's a savage so it's like <laughs> just just long long days and I, I was feeling it and i was like you know what this is like I really get excited for our shows, but like this was one like I was really, really excited about, you know, not that I haven't been excited about the other ones, but I was like, I don't want to be, you know, lagging, you know, I don't, I don't want to feel like, you know, like a, like a mope the whole time. So I was like, I need a little, little pick me up. Now I very rarely drink coffee. You guys see, I drink tea, but uh, I was like, you know what? I just need a little, little something extra tonight. Well, I mean, all credit to you. You came up with the idea for this show topic. So that's right. That's right. So I guess I have to kind of be on my, my agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I am a coffee drinker, but I don't drink coffee at eight o'clock at night. I don't really drink any coffee after about two in the afternoon. See, see, like my if my wife has coffee past two in the afternoon, she's up all night. And I never understood that. Like when I was in my 20s, like I could drink a Mountain Dew and go to bed. And I think even still, like now it's, you know, it's eight o'clock here on the East Coast. I'll drink this. I'll be good. I'll get home by like 10 30, maybe 11 o'clock and I'll be able to fall asleep. Once my head hits the pillow, it's like my body knows like, Oh, it's system shutdown. Yeah. We're going to sleep. Drives yeah. my wife crazy. That I can fall asleep like instantly. That old cliche of uh Seattleites and coffee. Mm. I can drink coffee all day and fall right asleep at night. <laughs> takes a lot of caffeine to affect me, but uh, how was your guys' week? Tony, good week. Uh, it's, been, it's been hectic. I actually I had to work Saturday, and I've got to go to work after this show. Oh, <laughs> we got no, a lot of, yeah. I've got a lot of stuff going on at work. I need to be there over the weekend, but I'll take some some days off during the week. Um, but yeah, I've, I've nice I've been, I've been ordering loads of stuff, and like nothing's turning up. I've ordered that. Um, uh, you guys recommended it, the Marvel Select Hulk. Oh, um, great figure. I, I ordered I ordered that and Union Jack and the comic Red Skull, um, all from the same. I wanted I hadn't tried this vendor before. They're supposed to be really good in Australia, you know, like an online um, action figure website. I heard really really good things about them, so I ordered these three figures. It took them eight days to ship it out. Oof! I'm like that's not good customer service. <laughs> not at all. Bobby, how about you? Good week. Shipping a lot of in yeah, I mean, a lot of just, what have you. Just, well, yeah, a lot of hours. I mean, we got almost all the orders out already. Um, you know, I got a great team of guys uh, that help with the orders, so uh, we got a, a ton done. Um, you know, the last of it will go out on Monday, 
And then, but like each day orders are still coming in. So it's like, you know, we have to get through the, the bulk of it and then get to those ones that come in daily. And then I'm just, I'm just swamped. I'm so behind on like other work. So I need to, I need to get cracking uh, on that. So I was just like doing some work before and I'm like, man, I got to be here again, probably tomorrow night. I was here late. Like after my kids went to bed, I came back to the office every day for like the last like seven days. Um, so I'm putting in some OT. Well, I got my shipping notice for series two A from the in stock sale. So thank you. Which one? You ordered you had like four orders. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm I'm so conditioned to add to cart, check out, check out, check out that I was like, oh wait, I want one of these two and one of those. So I went back twice, three total orders. <laughs> Cause I'm a dummy, but you know, ordering from Mezco, it's like you're in, you're out. You have to be, otherwise you miss it. And that, and that's the thing. Like, I know like big bad, you, you have like, like you can just order a bunch of stuff and then know when you want it shipped. So you can like get one, just one big order. Whereas I wish we can do something like that. We're not set up that way. So it's like, I, there are a few people that message me after the fact like oh can, can i combine orders and it's like no we just we get the orders in and we have to process them so we're getting them in we're processing them immediately so it's like we can't just stop and and, and put orders together you know i know it's you know you're, you're paying it's bad for everyone because it's like the customer's paying shipping twice we're shipping out multiple boxes so it's more time for us but I think maybe we'll get to the point where we can do something like what Big Bad does, where you can put everything into one giant order and, and you know, send it out when when you like to. But again, we're you know, we're still we're still small. We're not we're not that big uh, to, to be you know doing something like that. But it's all it's all stuff that I'm looking into. Um, I imagine and, Big Bad has a massive warehouse to do what they oh, do with they, their piles they of loot. Put, they put something, a video on their Instagram. Uh, showing their warehouse, their way, their warehouse looks like Dallas Stadium, like oh, wow, like, literally like a, like, a, like a football stadium. It it was massive, you know. So it's like they're probably in, you know, a hundred thousand square feet. I'm in two thousand square feet. So it's like you know, it's a big difference. Hmm. But the good news okay. is, is that we are most likely opening up internationally international ordering again. Uh, I'm working right with my, my web guy to make sure that we, we can do it right and efficiently so that we can get our international customers back on board. Just awesome. ship to, just ship to everywhere, but Australia. Oh, a hundred percent. Your continent sucks. <laughs> it's all a desert and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. we do have a super chat before we get into it here. James Salzberg, thank you very much. He says it's never too late for coffee or Mountain Dew, and never too early for Youngling Lager. Ying, Yingling Lager. Oh, it's a beer. Beer. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, and we got one from Robert Diaz. Thank you. When is Bobby going to announce the highly desired unlicensed action figure from the RoboCop line? The man who got shot in the Nether region. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen some cool customs of that of that figure, like where they've just taken like a reaction figure, painted painted red around his dick, and then put it on a card back, and it's a picture of him getting shot in the cock. That scene, that scene, while hilarious, makes absolutely no sense. Like the guy, he didn't lift her up. He would have to lift her up so her crotch was higher than his crotch. Shooting her through the skirt, she'd have to be six feet tall, and he'd have to be like five five. And she was like, from what I remember, standing like, yeah, maybe she had heels on, but it still wouldn't make her tall enough to get through her skirt under her crotch and hit him in the dick. So <laughs> totally ridiculous scene. Now, granted, it is, a, it is a movie about a cyborg, but, you know. How about 21 Jump Street, the movie when the guy at the end gets, yeah. he gets shot in the crotch? <laughs> Probably Never the hardest it. I've ever laughed. Uh, that movie is worth it just for that scene. Is a good movie. Wow. Um, Sal. Oh, whoa. Hey there, big guy. Sal, thank you so much, man. Um, we appreciate you so much. And not just because these gigantic super chats that you send, but um, you're a good friend and you're a good, you're a good dude. 
Sal uh, Sal is one of the best guys I know. He was here doing long hours after working the night shift. Uh, he has been an unbelievable help uh, with shipping and, and, and everything. So uh, here's to you, Sal. I'll yeah. drink to that. Thanks for the free labor. <laughs> <laughs> he says, um, have a figure on me, Ryan. Thank you all for making my work nights more enjoyable. Love you all. Love you too, man. Thank you so much. I hope much. your work night is as uneventful as possible, Sal. And uh, you don't have to do any. You don't have to do any overtime because, man, you do a lot of, as it is. So, have a I good hope one. your your night is crackhead free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you again, man. Pre uh, really appreciated. Uh, we got one from a world made of cardboard. Thank you. He says first R rated movie I saw was RoboCop. I had that figure on Bobby's table. I coveted that figure. I wanted that so bad. Um, I never had it as a kid. I, I was kind of out of toys by the time that Robocop came out. You know, because I'm 90, 90, 89, 90, 91. This was yeah. 88. 88. 88. Because I think the Robocop movie was like 86 or 87. And then this, part, this, cartoon, yeah. this cartoon came out right after that. Technically, that toy line is based on the cartoon. Yes, but we'll get into it. This. this is one of the yeah one of the rare R-rated properties that had a cartoon that the figure line was based on. Yeah, thank you, a world made of cardboard. And we're caught up on super chats, so I do just want to remind everyone before we get into it: uh, the three POA has its own channel now. Uh, Tony, you put a link in the description. Is that right to the new channel? Uh, yep. <laughs> Great. To so check. click, <laughs> click that link in the description. Go to the three POAs uh, new channel. Hit subscribe. Ring that bell. Soon, at some point, we will exclusively do this show on that channel. For now, we're going to dual stream, so everyone gets a chance to uh, click the subscribe button over there. Um, so please do that. We're I I think we're at like two hundred and some odd subscribers over there right now. Yeah, we, we, we need to get to a thousand subs and, and, and guys, it's it was always kind of my intention at the start, as you know, Ryan I want Ryan to have his own channel. Once that channel is up and running, it's just gonna benefit all of you because you know YouTube content is free. And when Ryan has his own channel, we'll still do the three POA every two weeks, but he can do other stuff. He can bring on guests and interview guests on his on do his own shows and you just you're gonna get more content and um yeah, if if you enjoy watching this, please please subscribe to the other channel. The yeah, I've been like. I've been racking my brain on what else I want to do besides this, whether it's pre-produced videos or another live stream, probably both. Um, but I did make the announcement last night on Infinity Equation that because of my work schedule, next Infinity Equation is my last, and it's only due to my uh, my work schedule. So. Tony, thanks for encouraging me to start my own channel so I have another outlet for all this. Now, um, now, when he, everyone, when he says work schedule, he means his OnlyFans account work schedule. He doesn't mean like <laughs> real work schedule. Let's, you know, let's, let's, you know, throw the truth out there. For Laser without pants? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was going to suggest uh, that you do a solo two-hour stream just showing us all the things you do with that heat gun, but <laughs> that might get you banned from YouTube. <laughs> I only heat stuff up. Oh, here it is. I always have it close by. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for changing uh, the avatar there, Tony. It's great. I just removed myself. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I always... Um, you know, I like to change up the audio avatar um, for every show. And I give Bobby so much crap that I thought I would change it up for this one. So <laughs> that is from Ryan announcing his departure from Infinity Equation, which I know we're all sad about. But uh, I, I wish you all the best, Ryan, on this new venture with the 3POA channel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay, oh, we got another super chat. So let's get to that and then we'll get into our topic for the night. 
Brian Dillingham, thank you very much. He said, I cannot send Super Chats on the 3POA channel. That's right. So YouTube yep. requires you to have a 1,000 subscribers until you can add that feature. So once we get there, we'll add it. Um, Toy Connections here saying 1,000 subs and 4,000 watch hours. So There you go. We've got to get some content up on there as well. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, one more. They're rolling in. Thank you, Tenko. He says, I'm assuming it'll be discussed later, but y'all have any thoughts on the Predator alien figures being sold at Walmart? They seem to be aimed at kids. Uh, that wasn't on the agenda for tonight, but um, I think they're actually really good figures for adults or uh, kids. Are they the um, higher toy ones? Not no. higher. It, it's no. um, Sal would know who makes them. <laughs> um, He's customized some of them really no. well. It's not Jackson. Lenard. Lenard, yeah. 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 Um, I bought a few of them just for the accessories. Like one of them came with a really cool Doberman pincher. They come with cool uh, face huggers and, and different props and accessories. It's a great line. Uh, Ma did you bring that up? Or did I? Did I? Okay. Yesterland Toys, thank you. He says... Mine was Rambo First Blood, and thank you, Bobby, for new boxes for Duster and Sergeant Slaughter. I don't know another company that would do that. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I believe uh, I, I'm. I'm getting this hit him right. Uh, he contacted me. The uh, either UPS or, or USPS, because sometimes UPS transfers the package to USPS mm -hmm. for like the last leg of it. Uh, they destroyed his box and. Uh, you know, he sent me some images and luckily none of the figures or accessories inside were damaged, but you know, it's like, you know, you wanted the file cards and you want the, you know, the points in the boxes. So I was like, Hey, listen, man, I, I, I got a ton of boxes. I'll send you some boxes. So I sent them out some boxes, get them out of my office. Cool. Hmm. Right on. Thank you. Yesterland toys. See, Bobby, and, okay. you're, you're my kind of asshole. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, Matt Cropsey, thank you very much. He says, what's up, guys? Hey, Ryan, just got my McFarlane clay face today. Great figure. That might be a pickup for me, too. That one looks really cool. Um, McFarlane excels at the big monstrous figures. Uh, so thank you for the super chat. Okay, so we are talking toy lines based on R-rated films. Um, yeah. This is, if you notice the title of the show, part one. So we're not going to get to every toy line tonight. This is not an extensive list. Even in part two, we probably won't cover them all because there is a lot. So just to get that out of the way, so we don't get the, but you forgot about comments. <laughs> uh, we'll get it anyway. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Okay. Conan by Remco. Early 80s. Bobby... Did you collect this one? So I did not. Now, if memory serves me correct, there was a Conan comic book. So I believe that's what these were based off of. Not the movie. Right? Um, I'm sure, but, but possibly, yeah. Yeah, but the, but the movie was out like right around the same time. So it was kind of one of those things where I think the figures were based on the comic, but the movie was out at the same time. So... It was still like, yeah, here's this property that shows, you know, nudity and blood and dudes getting their head chopped off. And it's like Conan doesn't have cursing, but it has enough gore and nudity to make it R. And, you know, it's like, what kids are watching it? But no, I didn't. I, I was a bit too young for this because uh, this was what I think 82. Uh, I was born yeah. in 82. So. My first experience with Conan was the only Conan that matters, and that was Destroyer. So, but that Destroyer didn't come out, I think, till 85 or 86. So I was, you know, older than, older than to see it. But for this early stuff, no, I didn't, I wasn't in on this. Um, Tony, any of them? I'm not even sure that we got these in the UK, but um, I think if you're going to talk about Conan, it's it's important to... I, I don't know how true it is, but there was always this um, pretty substantial rumor going around that 
Um, the production company who were making the Conan film went to Mattel to make a line of toys. Then when Mattel saw how violent it was, they said, hey, we can't make toys on this. And then it became Masters of the Universe. So I believe that's fairly true. And they did kind of have some yeah. sort of a... Yep. Um, there was some kind of a lawsuit, but um, Mattel eventually won the case because they said that He-Man was different enough from from Conan. So... Um, I, and these are certainly different enough for Masters of the Universe. <laughs> like, yeah, the biggest I, difference being quality. <laughs> I've I've heard it both ways, that the way you said it, and then also that Mattel wanted to make Conan, and they couldn't secure the license, so instead they did their own Conan or He Man. So, so Mattel couldn't secure the license, but Remco could. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not sure Remco did because they were running other lines called, um, and they cut, they fit in with this. I mean, this was this was basically in response to Master of the Universe, I believe. This Conan line, because as you can see, I mean, <laughs> they look awfully familiar. Well, I believe this this Conan line came out before Masters. Um, they also wow. had Remco did uh, Warlord. Uh, figures War, based on that's the, the one or based, yes. on the, based on the dc comic characters and they were basically the same body mm -hmm. now i think that mattel kind of copied these ones and and, and what warlord did now these are a little a little stubbier and, and kind of shittier looking but mattel kind of went off this in a way uh because yeah he-man came out in what 84 82 82 was 82 mm-hmm why did yeah, I think the toy line in eighty two, and then the um, um, the animated series in eighty three. Got it. Okay, I always think He Man's later, but um, but, but yeah, but Remco had did a bunch of stuff. Like they were like Mego. They were like, hey, let's use the same body for all our toy lines. Yeah, and they they had a lot of lines that were very very similar to Master of the Universe, mm -hmm. but weren't really, you know. Yeah, it was like They're, you could get a, a Remco toy for cheaper than a He Man toy. Now, now just go with me on this figures. for a second. Hmm? Just go with me on this. Look at that toy. It's Imagine amazing. if it was redone by Valiverse and <laughs> Kerak had a monster chariot. That, that's that's the vehicle I mean, you're working on, isn't it, Bobby? Come on, story, tell me. This story takes place in 2028. Who drives a chariot? I mean, with the price of gas, Kerak. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's driving a chariot again. A two-headed uh, dragon <laughs> pulling that chariot. I mean, <laughs> look, Tony, you can't give away these ideas for free. You gotta you can, come on now. Um, Bobby doesn't listen they, to my ideas anyway. He's a he's way too smart for that. So when I was looking up this toy line, and it, and it is very mixed in with um, what was the one you said, Bobby, based on the Warlord, comic? Warlord. Warlords. They were almost the same line, but not quite. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure they shared the same bodies, and it just so happened to come out around the same time as Conan. They had this playset, and I had never seen this thing before. Have you guys ever seen the Fortress of Doom? I have not. I'm thinking this may have been like foreign only, like overseas, maybe never in the States. Hmm. Or maybe it was so fragile that it just disintegrated. And so by the time I was old enough to play with toys, anyone a, that had it, it was already is destroyed. Is it a bunch of cardboard? Looks like it. Yeah, it looks like all cardboard and some plastic pieces. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, God, that thing looks horrible. <laughs> It was bad. <laughs> now, now, Remco also did the Rocky Three toy line, and it was the only year that toy line came out, and they used the exact same bodies. So mm -hmm. it was like across the board for Remco; they just kept using the same bodies over and over. They did uh, Mr. T in that line, didn't they? They did. Yeah, it was I Rocky, Apollo, that. Clubber Lang, and Hulk yeah. Hogan. Yeah, Clubber Lang. I think that's I... But. Uh, anyway, th there's not a ton to say about this, but I wanted to get to it because I figured there'd be some good Conan the Destroyer uh, memes made on this show. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but I, oh, Bobby didn't have this, so I guess he's not Anything a re, he's not a real Conan fan. How apparently. dare you! <laughs> I have a Conan sword in my hallway here. I am a fan, just not a I, barbarian. I mean, if Conan was Star Wars, you'd be a sequel trilogy fan, you know. Oh, so, you <laughs> bastard! Now I know that what was, you do. <laughs> that was Shocked cold. Hard. <laughs> that was cold. That was a listen. That was a a rough one, Ryan. Jesus. That hey, was... I'm going. I'm going all out tonight. I'm not being nice how, anymore. How dare you? Uh, he's got. He's got his own channel you. now, Bobby. You, yeah, you I know, right? Oh, shit. Fuck big God. time. <laughs> big time. Laser pants. Um, I'm going to defriend you on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> You would be too. the first one. Uh, before we move on, before we Done. move on, <laughs> before we move on from uh, Conan, I do want to get to the super chat from Tony Robles. Thank you. He says, "Life's good." Got my Valiver shipping notice. Thanks for the badass figures. Also, Tony, how do you mount the Rambo? Fifty cal to the HM Jackal. Um, I took a small piece of Technic Lego, kind of wedged that in the hole because the um. The, yeah, the, the, the port where you put the 50 cal in, the hole's way too big. So I jammed in a piece of Technic Lego that was hollow, and then it just it worked perfectly first time. I didn't have to glue nothing or anything. So um, Lego, folks, I learned that from Toy Poloi. I was just going to say that. Here. You must have learned that from Toy Poloi. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so, oh, we got another one. Yeah. Matt Talon, thank you very much. He says, good evening from Indiana. I th in in Dina, Indiana, I think. I think you mean Indiana. Yeah, Bobby. Since we're on the subject, are you shooting for an R rating for the Action Force movie? Well, since it's brought up, um, if it were only up to me, it would be R rated. Um, however, producer, the director, you know, my partners on this this whole venture. Um, you know, they have a say in it also. I've been pushing very hard for an R rating. Because uh, when you're doing military, I feel like you can't do it justice without it being R. Like, there has to be cursing. There has to be, you know, people being shot. And it has to be as realistic as possible. However, you know, when you're, you know, obviously when you're dealing with huge studios and they're putting hundreds of millions of dollars into projects like this, you have to make sure that they maximize their profits. So... You know, uh, I have a feeling it's probably going to go PG-13, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to push as hard as I can on that PG-13. I mean, look, nowadays you can get away with it. Like Batman had one fuck and like five shits. So you can get away with more than you could say five, 10 years ago. Uh, now, will uh, I also be pushing for a director's cut? You bet your ass. So you know, if we do a two hour and 45 minute movie, I want to film enough for three, three and a half hours. And I want that that red band director's cut. So, you know, um, that's where my, my head's at with it. But we'll see. Do you I heard that on set that um, Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz had a lot more than one fuck. <laughs> yeah. I on bet. the hood of the Batmobile. There's just, there's just one in the movie. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Um, do you guys remember when they re-released Deadpool 2 as a PG-13? Yeah. So I took my son to the PG-13 version, and I didn't really notice much of a difference other than the R version had all of the digital blood added. Like, that was kind of the it, only... And probably less F-words, for sure. Did it still have, like... Remember when him and his girlfriend are banging through all the holidays? That was Deadpool 1. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. That's they right. added the stuff with Fred Savage, like the, the Princess Bride yep. scene. Yep. Fred Savage is an adult, but he's in that same bed, and Deadpool's reading him the story instead of Columbo. So wait, I thought they did the PG-13 one for Deadpool 1, not Deadpool 2. Well, they might have, but I don't think it was released in theaters. Deadpool 2, oh, okay. yeah, Deadpool 2, they re-released as PG-13 in the theaters. Got it. Got but it. yeah, I mean, like, like you were saying, you can do so much with with a PG thirteen movie now that I think mm -hmm. you can make an awesome war movie, action force war movie at PG thirteen sure. if that's what the studio insists on. 
uh swift 718 thank you very much for the super chat he says what's up men happy saturday excited for tonight's topic thank you swift thank you very much appreciated and we are we got one more suzanne butler thank you for the super chat she says hi watching from and ontario canada love you guys well ontario thank canada you. good day mate. hey hey <laughs> That's the if, accent, right? if we were day, in Mike. Ontario, Canada, this would be a Tim Hortons. <laughs> uh, okay, we are caught up. Thank you, Suzanne. So, our second uh, R-rated toy line. We'll probably spend more time on this one. Commando. Ooh, now, this excited. is like, Bobby, this is your favorite movie. One and of, yes. Yeah. This is one of the toy lines that did not have an accompanying cartoon. That is this correct. Was, this was strictly uh, an R-rated movie. It was violent, bloody. Uh, it was the first time I saw a hatchet go into a dude's head. I was a young kid. And Schwarzenegger throws that hatchet right in the saw blades. Remember that? Saw, yeah, he throws a circular saw blade into that dude's That's, face. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's face, man. I was, like, yeah. blown away. Um, so... Who had it? I look. Full disclosure: as a kid, I wasn't buying this stuff. Bobby, you and Tony probably were. I know you were. You got some of it right there. Well, I bought it now. Uh, okay. Full disclosure: I did not have any of the Commando stuff uh, growing up. This was an obscure line. Mm -hmm. They they made him in eighteen inches. They made him in seven inches, and then they had like this weird three and three quarter line like a year later. Yep. But super, super obscure. Uh, so it's not like you would see this widely around. Um, you know, so again, I didn't see it. Um, I was probably too busy with, you know, with Thundercats and G.I. Joes and Silverhawks by the time, you know, Commando was out. I'm trying to remember what year Commando Commando came was out. like 84, 85. 80, so you yeah. were probably too 80, 85 it was. Yes, yeah, so I was I was still fairly young, but I remember seeing it you know, in the eighties, um, maybe not until, you know, later eighties, but, uh, had I known that there was a toy line, I would have been all over it. Now I found out, you know, years later, you know, in, in my twenties, I was like, what is this commando? So I was searching for, you know, the seven inch figure forever. But then like, I was like, wait, why get the seven inch figure? Why not just get the 18 inch figure? I mean, yeah. this thing's amazing. So, now he doesn't come with all of his gear that he had in the movie. He comes so with those kind of like, uh, nice. He comes with those nice hammer pants, though. Those soft he pants. does come with the hammer pants, which is pretty funny. Um, but he, you know, when he raids the the story, he comes with a, you know, he he gets a ton of artillery, and it's like, you know, the figure should have had that. Um, but you know, as a standalone Commando Arnold figure, I'm I'm down for it. Now we didn't get a better version of it until NECA put out their uh, mm -hmm. commando, which I have. It's, you know, it's spot on. It's, it's true to it. And then hot toys did a version that's like 600 bucks. It's really hard to get, but that's like the most perfect version you'll ever get of the commando figure. But this line weird, man, it was weird that it came out. Um, this, this is a hard R movie, man. Very hard R. Um, yeah. Kind of wild that they even like, did it now the company that put this line out diamond toy makers Dim diamond toy makers yeah so i don't know what else they did at the time but i could tell you it probably wasn't much now what they were probably doing was probably a smaller company sort of like a remco or smaller you know and they said all right what can we do to like make a splash like how can we get our, our foot in the toy industry and they probably said, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger's big commando. Who cares if it's rated R? Let's just get it because, you know, army stuff sells and let's just, you know, do, you know, Schwarzenegger stuff. So they probably got the license really, really cheap. And it just probably didn't do anything for them. Um, so know, I my theory was this larger scale, like this four or five inch scale didn't do too well because parents were like commando toys. It's, I'm not going to buy my kid that. So that's why they probably went to the three and three quarter because this would fit right in with G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, in in much the same they they did with a team where you had Galoob did the three and three quarter inch figures, then they did the six inch or maybe seven inch figures, whatever they were. But then Mister T, you could get you know giant size like that Commando there. But mm. I think what happened with this line is that. Um, both Commando and Rambo First Blood Part Two came out in 1985 um, in the cinemas. In 1986, the Force of Freedom cartoon came out and the Rambo toy line came out. The first time I ever saw these, I had I had picked up one or two Rambo figures during the year and um, my family went to visit um, my auntie and some cousins in Wales <clears throat> and it was the first time I was ever going to go to a Toys R Us. I was going to go to the big Toys R Us store in in, uh, in Cardiff in Wales. And although I knew I wasn't going to get anything on the day because we were like Christmas was like a month away, I went in there going, I hope they've got Rambo stuff in this Toys R Us because um, I'm going to be asking for Rambo stuff and hopefully my parents will, will buy it and, and take it home. And I walked into this, first of all, Going into Toys R Us for the very first time as like an eight, nine-year-old is quite the experience. Um, you know, having grown up with just small like um, mom, pa stores, toy stores. Mm-hmm. When I walked in and there was a wall of Rambo and then a wall of Commando next to it. It was on the shelves at the same time, kind of competing. And as I said, I already had a couple of Rambo figures. And as much as I liked the Commando movie, Rambo was my guy, you know. But I looked at this stuff in the toy store and I went, like, compared to the Coleco line, I was like, this is dog shit. (laughs) These (laughs) figures are terrible. Um, 16-inch super action figure. Yeah. Yeah. I Even as a kid, when they did these mega scale figures, the 16, 18-inch, I was like, why? Why are they wasting their time with this, you know? I wanted stuff that went with the line I already collected. It's so you can take them to bed with you. (laughs) (laughs) With my commando doll. Right? (laughs) So sweet. Um, So, oh man, look at that price tag. A buck 49. Yeah. Wow. My house. Times have changed. Um, Okay. I have so, a Tony, question for you guys, if you don't mind, yeah. Ryan. Right? No, go ahead. What What was the first R rated movie you ever watched? Do you Rambo remember three. what it was? Rambo, Rambo three. Was Rambo three R rated. Yes. Yes, because that was one of the movies my dad watched after the kids went to bed. But I snuck up out of bed and snuck yeah, out to the it, living room, and I was behind his easy chair watching. Behind it, he didn't know I was there watching Rambo three and. I fell in love. <laughs> I was like blown away. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. See, I'm here in Australia. We have another rate. So you got PG 13. Then we have M for mature audience, which is 15 and above. And then we have R, which is 18 and above. So a lot of the movies you talk about as being R rated here in Australia were rated M, which is 15 and above. Um, mm-hmm. to, I'm pretty sure Rambo 3 but Commando was definitely an R you know he lops off someone's arm with a machete and all sorts of stuff <laughs> oh yeah yeah um, so they had back in the day it was rated X but they changed that to NC-17 but yeah. there's so few movies that they ever rated NC-17 because they didn't make any money Showgirls Showgirls, Showgirls yeah that was like the only movie I remember being NC-17. Yeah. And who didn't want to see Jesse Spano getting down? <laughs> Jesse Spano. Yeah, Saved by the Bell fan, huh, Bobby? Oh, who wasn't? I was more of a Kelly guy myself. I mean, Kelly. Kelly Kapowski. I, yeah. I, I, I like Jesse. Okay. So what was your first R-rated movie, Bobby? I think it was RoboCop. Mm. Um, but I have to look at when Monkey Shines came out. But I had a very similar behind the easy chair experience that Ryan had. I was at my grandparents' house and they were watching Monkey Shines. And I remember hiding behind the chair, my grandfather's chair, watching this movie. Um, But I don't remember what year that was. So I'd have to go back uh, and see. But RoboCop, it was probably RoboCop. 
Um, that would that would make sense. Pre Robocop or Predator? I've never even Robocop. heard of Monkey Shine. Monkey Shines. It was a horror movie. Huh. Okay. It yeah. also. It also. I could have seen Nightmare on Elm Street. I was a big Freddy Krueger fan. Uh yeah. I've only seen so. one of those movies, but Tony. I want you to bring up that picture I asked you to bring up before the show. And in the meantime, I'm uh -huh. going to bring up a super chat. <laughs> Speaking of Freddie, yeah, Tony. Look at how confused Tony looks. Oh. <laughs> Matt Cropsey, thank you very much. He says, Demolition Man figures were my first R-rated toys. And Wow, that that's right. Demolition Man was R. Wow. Was Demolition it? Man, spoilers, will be a part of uh, part two of the R-rated toy line theme. So awesome. this is just part one. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so now we're going to get into the uh, Max FX Freddy Krueger. Yeah. I never had this, but I remember seeing on the shelf as a kid and being freaked out. Like, Freddy Krueger freaked me out as a kid. So this guy here is... He's, he's kind of like an eight-inch Mego figure. And mm -hmm. it was actually supposed to... I don't know whether they were planning to do a cartoon or what they were doing, but... Um, the actual kind of storyline is that this guy is a visual effects artist, but whenever he puts on the makeup and, and the, the costume of a certain character, he takes on their abilities in real life. And he was going to become like a crime fighter while dressed as Freddy, or you can see on the back that they had plans to do um, Alien, Frankenstein, Dracula. I've seen some other concepts. Um, the guy who kind of developed this concept. Um, I don't think he developed it for Matchbox, although Matchbox ended up getting the license. I think he was kind of developed the concept and was pitching it to a number of different places. He made all of his prototypes using the original 60s G.I. Joe figures and then had all the stuff attached to them. And I think he had much higher hopes for what the toy line was going to be. But um, it's a really, really cool toy and a really interesting piece of toy history but what matchbox did at the same time is they also made a talking freddy krueger doll which is nothing to do with max effects other than the fact that it was manufactured and sold by matchbox which is who did this max effects that talking freddy krueger doll became very very controversial um mm -hmm. it was I, I can't remember what his sayings were but it was like an old 60s gi joe where you pulled the pull string and he was like, I don't know what he said, you know, but it wasn't nice. <laughs> when I was in, I was in grade school and a kid brought that talking Freddy Krueger to, to school. Oh. And I re distinctly remember the teacher getting mad and taking it away. And I don't know if it was just because it was a toy. I think it was more because it was like Freddy Krueger. Yeah. I, I can remember going to school at the age of about nine, I want to say, eight or nine. And I was a big fan of this magazine called Fangoria um, back in the 80s. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I used to buy this magazine. Anyway, one day I took a, a copy of the magazine to school in my, in my, in my backpack. And like at lunch break or something, I've taken out my copy of Fangoria and I'm showing my friends. Some of my friends got freaked out. And I'm pretty sure the issue I had had something to do with one of the Freddy movies, you know. And it's all about movie special effects and stuff. But, like, a couple of the kids in the class got a bit freaked out by the pictures. Because here's me. When I asked you guys what was the first R-rated movie you saw, my dad let me sit down and watch the Bushido Blade with him when I was five years old. He didn't know it was an R-rated movie. And towards the end, Bushido Blade is this... Um, sort of B-movie samurai thing. Um, you know, they decapitate a couple of people with the samurai swords. And it didn't bother me at all. I, I, my dad was like at five years of age, I was asking him, how do they how do they like make that for the movie without actually chopping someone's head off? And he knew straight away, I was like, oh, he gets it. He knows it's not real. So yeah. from the age of five, they were letting me watch anything except for porn, really. <laughs> I wasn't interested in it at five anyway. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, 
the kids in the schoolyard who got freaked out by this Fangoria magazine, they ran to the teacher. The teacher came over. She thought the magazine was disgusting. I got suspended from school and a letter got sent home to my parents with a recommendation that they um, seek immediately. Uh, um, I had to go in for like some psychological assessment because oh my they thought I had a, a twisted mind. So I was like, I'll, t- I'll tell you I've got a twisted mind. You don't need to send me anywhere for that. <laughs> Tony, Tony, that's odd because I thought that you were so old that you were still in school and the teachers would beat you with the ruler. Wow. That's not the... <laughs> no. So my brother holds the dubious honor of being the last student at... Um, at St. Andrew's High School for Boys um, to be tanned with the, the... They used to call it the paddle. It was like yeah. a, a wooden paddle from a canoe. And at assembly, you'd get up out the front, you had to get down your hands and knees, and they would whack you across the back of the legs with it. Yeah, um, My brother was a couple of years older, so I was like, take one for the team, bro. He was Dude, the my, last one to my, get it at my school. My principal had a paddle, and he had a above his door in his office but this was like the mid to late 80s and they were not allowed to hit kids but he would threaten kids and he would scare the crap out of them with that thing he'd slam it on the table he'd take that paddle down and slam it until you were so scared you're like i'll be good you know don't beat me and of course my dad being the guy he is he's like i'll let that principal beat you so you better shape up (laughs) i don't care i'll let him beat you and then i'll beat you when you get home Good job, Papa Lee the Pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm gonna re- digress real quick. Yeah. My my mum had a had a had a favorite weapon when it came to punishing me <laughs> because a wooden spoon was not enough. No, those would break. I don't I, I don't know. I'm I'm certain in America you guys call it something different, but in in England we well here in Australia we call it glad wrap. It that that wrap you peel off the roll to wrap sandwiches. Yeah, saran wrap. Yeah. Saran wrap, saran wrap. Yeah. Until you've been smacked across the back of the legs with a big roll of saran wrap, you don't know what real pain is. You know, people would always talk about the wooden spoon, but I assure you the plastic spatulas were much worse Mm. (laughs) because the the wooden spoons would break. Yeah, my, my mom would threaten us with a wooden spoon. And I remember we were acting up one day and she hit my, uh, my older brother, Paul with a wooden spoon and broke it. Mm-hmm. And he laughed at her. Yeah. <laughs> she got so pissed. She just stormed off. She was just so mad at that, at that moment. But it was just like, and then we were like, wow, Paul, you, you defeated the wooden spoon. That means she can't threaten us with anything anymore. <laughs> Obi-Wan Chicone is the best YouTube username. Of all of YouTube, thank you. He says, "Thank you, sir. May I have another?" Indeed, I actually, I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I actually said that to my dad one time. I thought I was being funny, and I guess what? I got another, <laughs> and got man, another. did I regret it. Uh, <laughs> okay, back to toys, huh? Um, so back to Freddy. Bobby, let's hear your uh, Freddy experience. So that. I, I got really into Freddy because I had a best friend who was into, you know, horror movies. So I, I had to be into horror movies, whether I liked it or not. Now, my dad probably wished I wasn't because I had nightmares for like from like the time I was like five to seven. But, yeah, we would watch we would walk to Palmer video. And this is back when they had like video rental stores and they were a huge thing. And. We would go and each weekend we would rent a different Nightmare on Elm Street. We'd start with one, two, three, four. And, um, you know, they at that point they had gotten up to six, I believe. Six came out in 92 or 93. And, uh, you know, so we're we would just loop them. We would get through all six and then go back and start all over again. And I get nightmares every, every time. But it's like I had Fangoria. I knew it was all fake, but I still had nightmares. But, you know, he and I just loved Freddy Krueger. We would make... We would take gloves, like winter gloves, and cut the fingertips off 
And then we would take popsicle sticks and shave them down the points and stick them in the gloves. So we would have like Freddy, Klu- Freddy Krueger gloves. And you and still have both eyes. That's impressive. amazing, right? The no. stuff we did, I can't believe we survived it. But I just remember there was nothing like toy wise out for Freddy. And then there was a big comic book store in New Jersey. It was a chain. This is back when they had a chain of comic book stores called Comics Plus. Now, it was huge. I remember it being at least half the size of a Toys R Us. Like, it was huge. The place was enormous. You'll never see that nowadays. And all, all it was was just comics and toys. And the majority of the store was comics, but in the back, they had all toys, all vintage toys and modern toys, modern for the 90s. But I remember up on a shelf, that was where the expensive stuff was, they had that Max FX Freddy. And I don't, I don't remember how much it was, maybe 60 or $70, which was a lot at that time. And I begged my dad for it. I was like, they have a Freddy Krueger toy. And I got it for my birthday. And obviously I opened it up and man, I played with that thing all the time. And he was always dressed as Freddy. He was never, you know, dressed down, but that was cool to have that. And then I don't know what I did with it as years went on and I got older, but you know, when I was putting this office together and I wanted stuff that I had from my childhood in those glass cases, I was like, that was like number one on the list was that Max FX Freddy. And I got a really nice version. It was really cheap too. So um, yeah. And it was one of those things where for a toy line that had one figure and then got canceled, you would think it would be a little more rare. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the commando figure cost more than the Max FX, Max FX Freddy. Um, but it, it, it was an amazing toy. If you can get one, get one loose. The stuff fits on them really nice. The soft goods for the time are fantastic. Um, yep. that's, that's a great figure. I'm really surprised that it was so inexpensive because just being that it's a Freddy Krueger figure mm-hmm. and there was only one figure in the line, I, it seems like a lot of parents would say, no, I'm not buying you that. So there wasn't a yep. lot of them out there. Yep. So the fact that you got it for so for so cheap uh, do you mind saying was, how much i think it was maybe a hundred bucks wow yeah maybe a hundred but it, it was really cheap like surprisingly cheap so within the space of two weeks i bought this box which is in pretty good condition um 90 dollars australian which would be about 65 and then a week later i found a a loose, complete mint condition figure for like 40 bucks. So between, awesome. I think a hundred dollars to have a, a box version and a mint loose version. So you no, know, I, after- I wonder, I'll have to look, I wonder if the talking Freddy is more expensive, you know? Yeah. I've never, I've never been interested in buying that. Cause it's like, yeah, I uh, didn't care for that one either. It, it's, um, it's a doll. It's not a, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely I mean, you can debate style. whether Action Man's a doll or not. I don't care. I'll fight you. Wasn't it made by the same company that did that talking Steve Urkel? They made a talking Steve Urkel? Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was after your time. I think you were- they also made a they also made a same talking Pee Wee Herman. Yes, they did. Yeah. 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 So I, I have no history with the Max FX or the talking Freddie Mercury. Um, the only Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury. I mean, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy that doll, sing some tunes. Some I, tunes. I have the SH figure. Yeah, but that should Mercury. be a singing Freddie Mercury, not a talking <laughs> Freddie <Yeah>. Mercury. <laughs> Freddie, Mer- Freddie Krueger. Um, how the hell do you get those two confused? I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, good, fair comment. Hey, it's his show. <laughs> good point, right? Yeah. Yep. Now, someone's going to clip that part, what I just said. They're going to upload it on its own. Um, New intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, anyway, I had never... I had, I had the, the only Freddy Krueger movie I had seen was the third one, Dream Warriors. Mm. And it was, at a, it was at a cousin or friend's house. Um, but it was the one where the dude is a comic book artist. Mm-hmm. and his dream was like he was the hero from his own comic book and he had those two uh flintlock pistols remember that yep i thought that was so cool but the rest of the movie freaked me out but 
Greg Fenstad said, LP, it's all over his tank already. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Probably have fun with it. 400 pages already. <laughs> have fun with it, guys. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad you guys were familiar with this toy because it wasn't even on my radar, but you guys brought it up saying we have to talk about this Freddy Krueger toy. Yeah. Um, no, if you I, guys, I didn't know that when I was a kid, but yeah. If you guys get a chance, go see Tony's video on it on Analog yes. Toys. It's awesome. It's I awesome. was just going to mention that because when we were talking about this show, Tony sent me the link, and I, I'm pretty sure I'd seen it before, but I went back and watched it. Great video. Now, what yeah. I wouldn't I, give to find those original prototype concept models of Dracula or Frankenstein or Alien... I'm pretty yeah. sure the guy's still got him. He he's got this oh, yeah? dedicated website to you know telling the whole story, which is how I was able to research oh. the video. Um, oh, I wish I could remember his name. Hmm. Uh, but if anyone does go and watch that video, like, don't have a dig at me about the the video quality and the audio quality. It was the beginning of the channel. That was like the fifth or sixth video I ever made for this channel. Yeah, that so. was like, I remember seeing that one a long time ago and thinking yeah. like, oh, that's yeah. like one of the, the ways I found your channel. Cool. Okay, so before we move on to RoboCop, just your mid-show reminder to click the link in the description to the 3POA channel and hit that subscribe button because soon this show will be exclusively on the 3POA YouTube channel. So, <clears throat> as I said... Robocop. Robocop had its own toy line. But it also had an accompanying cartoon. So, although its ultimate source material is a movie, it was based on a Saturday morning kids cartoon. When I found this picture, the first thing I noticed was, well, the first thing I thought was, oh. Batman the Dark Knight Collection, Robin Hood <laughs> Prince of Thieves. Look at that. So this guy here with the white hair, that's the sheriff of Nottingham. Don't, from don't give Prince it away. I, I've been dying to do a video with Michael French on all the reuse that Kenner did between multiple toy lines. Superpowers, Robin Hood, Robocop, yep. Terminator. <clears throat> uh, it, it's Dark Knight Collection. Dark Knight Collection. Wild the amount of reuse that Kenner did. A lot. Like there, um, I, there's, there's three toy lines alone that used Robocop stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is a toy line that I really coveted as a kid. I never had one. But um, the uh, ED... Uh, not, Ed 209. Well, 209. 209, but it says 260 here on the uh, the advert. That's probably for the cartoon version. Exactly. Um, now, I did have a friend who had that ED 260 or 209, but... Th that was an awesome toy. And these toys had a cap gun feature where they yeah. would pop. I had some cap guns, but I never had a figure that would take caps and pop, 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 pop. So, Bobby, you were probably all over this line as a kid. All over it. This was this was it, man. Like I said, RoboCop was one of the first R-rated movies I saw, but how could you not be into RoboCop as a kid? And then, yeah, the toys were just... I said this this figure came out in 88 so i was six years old prime bobby valentine uh so yeah i was i ate this line up it, there there was also tons of it at the store kb toys r us had tons of of robocop and the line went deep you had the ed 209 you had the car you had the motorcycles you had a bunch of villains a bunch of heroes i didn't give a crap about the other heroes i just wanted robocop i wanted the glow and dark robocop i wanted the ed 209 i didn't i didn't get all that stuff but you know, I just, I loved it. You know, and caps, it was like every, every gun that came out when you were a kid had caps and then these had caps. Mm -hmm. so you just had caps forever. You can go to like the corner store and get, you know, a roll of caps for 25 cents. And it was, it was awesome. So you had so much to use with the figure. It was, it was great. And his, dude, his helmet came off. It was like one of the first figures of the helmet came off. It was just a great line. Um, everything about it. Now, as a kid, I definitely picked it apart, you know, the way I pick lines apart now, where I was like, 
wait a second, that gun he has isn't the same gun. It's not the Auto 9 from the movie. So, you know, I was like, what the hell is that? And then it was like, it plugs into his leg, but it's the wrong leg. And I was like, right. it's, it's the opposite leg. So, it's, you know, it's just funny, funny things they did. But overall, I mean, listen, for the time, the sculpt is great. The paint's great. You know, like I said, the detail on it, it's, it's a really great line. The line had vac metal in it. Uh, it was it was awesome. Such a sick line. Yeah, it had a great range of vehicles for only yep. – it was only around yep. for a year or two, this line in the stores. But they went really deep, I think, because they yeah. were just like, wait a second. You know, like we were saying, a lot of the R-rated stuff didn't have cartoons, but it was like they went movie and then cartoon. Um, so they were probably all in. They're like, well, if you're going to do a cartoon, shoot, man, cartoons were huge then. Um, you know, so I think every cartoon was 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 great back then. So they just thought – well, shoot, if it's got a cartoon, it's got to be great and it's going to have longevity. Fortunately, it didn't, but which I don't know how it didn't. Um, but, you know, a lot of these R-rated lines just didn't didn't do well. Have you did you did you watch the cartoon? I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> it probably doesn't. I mean, listen, none of that stuff holds up. Try, I tried letting my I tried letting my son watch He Man. It was bad. It was painful. Yeah, I was like, Bud, I'm not going to subject you to this. Turn it off. Let's put on you know 90, 1990 Ninja Turtles movie. You know. Yeah, of of the big three, you know, from the eighties, I I revisited He Man and GI Joe and Transformers with my kid. And the only one, and this is when he was young, he's 12 now, but when he this is when he was younger, a few years ago. Really, the only one that we got into that was decent was Transformers. And even mm-hmm. that one's a little rough, but at least it has a really cool story. He Man was, oh man, man bad. corny. Yeah. Thundercats is bad. It, all, dude, all yeah. that stuff is bad. Exo Squad okay. is, the story okay. is great. Cartoon's terrible. No, we don't want Lyle Convoy coming after us. Thundercats <laughs> was excellent. Okay. <laughs> Thundercats was like we all like Thundercats. All right. Transformers does not have a good story. Well, it it's better than He-Man. At, at, at least it wasn't just so formulaic that it, you know, was kind of the same thing every time. Like it went somewhere. And then, you know, of course the yeah. movie came out. And, oof, <laughs> they killed Optimus. For, for for me the the pinnacle of 80s animation was dungeons and dragons that that still holds up that cartoon that one i've never even seen neither have i really Mm -mm. that was really really good i've also heard that thunder the barbarian really holds up that one's really good yeah i I didn't grow up watching that and that that's from the late 70s that thunder yeah i think wasn't it 1980 Maybe. maybe yeah but uh, yeah, you can see here the. I I saw this and I'm like, oh, Bat Cycle, Joker Cycle. Yep. <laughs> um. So yeah, Robocop Which line came Kenner. first. Robocop for came sure. First. Yeah, this line. Yeah, this was eighty-eight. Dark Knight Collection was ninety-two. So they they borrowed from Silverhawks and Robocop and. Dark Knight, yeah. Dark Knight Collection was was earlier than that because Batman Returns came out in 92. 91, 92. 90, 92. It's 92, so then Kenner had the Batman Returns line. The Dark Knight line was before that. So 91? Was, yeah, so it was like 90, 91 because Toy Biz had 89 and then probably 90. around 90, 91 was that Dark Knight line, which was great, but I think it, it didn't last as long as a lot, and a lot of that stuff is rare because they went right into the Batman Returns line. Mm-hmm. All right, we got a super chat here from Wolfie762. Thank you. He said, Great stream, gents. Good thing Robocop didn't get that X rating on the theatrical release. That would take all kinds of creative explanation for a live stream topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, Robocop was, thank you for that, Wolfie. Robocop was, um, it's like a satire. It was like over the top. It was almost, yeah. it, it wasn't trauma, but it was almost like trauma right like a trauma film i don't know what that means trauma the b movie like production company that made 
Toxic Avenger, which we're going to get yeah. into. And I'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, look, the, the the original RoboCop, because obviously these are based on the cartoon, but as right, the Ultra RoboCop Police movies, yeah. as the RoboCop movies progressed, and then there was was there a live action TV show as well? Yes. Later on. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then another and then, toy know, company. Uh, Island Toys or something, Island Toys or Toy yeah. Island took over the toys then, which were great toys, but that was for the show. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it got more and more kid-friendly as it went along, but that original film is very violent, but mm -hmm. it is an absolute classic. It is still rewatchable today. Yep. If you can get hold of the director's cut and... You know, if if you enjoy violence, it basically just there isn't a lot kind of cut out of the original one. There's just extended shots of you know, so like when Ed Two Hundred Nine malfunctions and it starts shooting the guy um, in the boardroom in the director's cut, that goes on for ages. This guy's body is just on the <laughs> on the table, getting obliterated for an extra five minutes. Um, <laughs> terrific! I'd buy film. that for a dollar. <laughs> See, it's probably about twenty five dollars, but yeah. I remember when, like, as a kid, when they killed Murphy, yeah. that traumatized the shit out of me. Um, I, I can never forget like them shooting his hand off. Like that yeah. was, I was like, holy yeah. shit! Like shotgun to the yeah. hand. That was that's a like them killing him is a rough scene. They fuck him up. Um, you know they don't yeah. just kill him; they they destroy him. RoboCop, the movie itself, that's a whole podcast on its own. Yeah. And yeah the whole yeah. story behind that and and the social commentary behind it. Uh, I do want to get to the Super Chat because we kind of already covered it, but Suzanne Butler, thank you very much once again. Thank you. Didn't RoboCop fire paper caps? It, they sure did. Okay. And uh, um, I don't know of any other toy line besides, of course, Cap Guns that had the Cap feature. Cops, cops and Crooks. Cops and okay, cops and crooks. Cops and crooks. Thunder Punch He Man. Oh um, yeah, yeah, Thunder Punch He Man. There was a Punisher figure with roller caps in it. There's oh, quite that's a few right. Yeah, because the the Toy Biz Punisher had the same back loader as, right. this, as this figure did. Yes, I did have that yeah. Toy Biz Punisher too. Oh yeah, uh, a world made of cardboard. Thank you for the super chat. The RoboCop and Lewis figure was the worst female figure ever. Someone's got to be. <laughs> Can you zoom in? Is that Ann Lewis top row second from the right? Uh, nope. Let's see if I even have a picture of it. I don't. I thought that's doesn't that not, not say Officer Ann Lewis? Where? Yeah. Oh, yes, it does. Yes. Can you zoom in? Yes, I can. I got to exit full screen here, and then. Oh, that's right. She had a crossbow. Crossbow. Which was probably the crossbow in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line. I believe it is. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it. Yeah. Because uh, I like I've never taken a look at this before. Well made of cardboard. Thanks for the super chat. I've always thought the worst female figure ever was Amy Allen from Galoob's A Team line. But this might be up there. <laughs> so being that I didn't have those figures. My vote for worst female figure would probably be the Batman Returns Catwoman. Although what? I had it as a kid. That one. That was, a, that was a great figure. With the arm and the whip. We talked about it last yeah. night on Infinity Equation, but it had the whip action. Yeah, the whip action. But she had like a power stance. Like she was, she wasn't just straight up and down. Like she had like a, a stance to her. She was a great figure. Okay. I mean, this Ann Lewis figure. There's nothing even that says female figure about it, except for the name underneath. If you're just looking at it, would you even know? Yeah, that's that yeah. looks more like Andy Lewis than Andy Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, World Made of Cardboard. Okay, so I'm scrolling down. We got one more super mm -hmm. chat. Robert Diaz, thank you very much. He says, The one guy said, Call an ambulance. Ed 209, turn that man into a hamburger helper. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna How about the guy that was ride. covered in acid and <laughs> toxic waste? 
Oh, we got it. Okay. We got it. quite a few. My Dude, figure culture. Not... Go ahead. Go ahead. My figure culture. Thank you. He says, first R-rated film, Die Hard. yippee ki mofos. They should have done toys for Total Recall. Love the podcast, fellas. Great topic. Je oh, that's Jedi Hunter 83 from Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, they didn't make Total Recall toys, really? They did not. If huh. they did, they would have done the chick with three boobs. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bet that would have been the best female action figure ever. 100%. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I'm going to remove this. And we got another super chat <laughs> real quick. Boy, they're well, coming in. Cardboard. Thank you very much. He said, uh, I heard the first cut of Robocop was rated X. The producers made no changes to the movie, um, but added the commercials and got it the R rating. Um, that was kind of, I don't know, makes sense because it was... Uh, the, the commercials really sort of kind of hyped up that satire, but um, yeah, interesting. It it definitely was rated X. They they did have to change things to get an R rating because most I, I think most theaters at the time wouldn't even play rated X or the what the equivalent is is NC seventeen today. They wouldn't even play him. So he could yeah, he could be totally right. So now I know this is uh, our next toy line and our last toy line for the night is very near and dear to both of your hearts and mine as well because I have some of these toys. Coleco's Ooh. Rambo. And look at that old modern collector laser pants has a Coleco <laughs> Rambo. Thanks to Tony. You sent me him and the Defender. So Rambo, again, yes, its root is an R-rated movie. <coughs> but it was based on a cartoon, Rambo and the Forces of Freedom, from 1986. So uh, kind of an odd scale for the time. At most stuff was like 5-inch, 3 and 3 quarter, 4-inch and stuff. 7-inch toy line, 1986. Yeah. Um, but... It was awesome for its day. Even for today, the vehicles and the play sets, they still really hold up. No, I, I, mean, I, I think this line, sorry, Ryan, um, this line uh, suffered from what like Remco did, where they had an established line that was this scale and this style of articulation. So they had to kind of keep going with it. They had sectars. And Sectars yeah. was really their only other action figure line. So it was kind of like what they knew. And, you know, that's why, like, these are like that. So. <clears throat> Sectars was such a cool toy line, man. So good. Love those things. I had two of them. Um, but, man, look at the disparity in the head size between these two figures. What is this like? I mean, Han Solo? There's a lot of different head sculpts. Yeah. I, it's for its day, I think they they got Sylvester Stallone pr done pretty yeah, well. Yeah, he was good. He was I mean, good. even if you know you had never seen Rambo, you're just looking at this thing, you'd be like, "Oh, that looks a lot like Sylvester Stallone." You know, it wasn't like a a Kenner action figure where they looked like nothing like their you know live action counterparts. Um, so Bobby, was this something you had as a kid? Was this something yeah. you were into collecting? Yeah. Even Such in 1986, line. you were like four years old when this came out. Yeah, but I think like either my brothers had it or I got it later, garage sales or flea markets or something. But I definitely had, I had Rambo with the, the rocket launcher. I had the Rambo with the t-shirt. And I think I had one other. I think I had a villain. Um, but this, I was all over this line. I want to say like my, I think my mom made me a, like she found like a, a, a turquoise piece of jewelry and cause she made me a Rambo necklace just cause <laughs> nice. like I wanted what Rambo had. Moonlight 47. I've, I've says... you, you, used, you used to be able to get these um, role play sets where you would have the plastic survival knife, the headband, and then the necklace with the little jade emerald colored mm -hmm. um, Buddha on it. And I've still got one, 
But yeah, I had one of them when I was a kid, and I used to wear it to school. I'd wear the necklace everywhere. Um, Moonlight Forty Seven uh, says this toy line kept GI Joe from using Stallone's likeness, right? Um, yeah, uh, Rocky was going to become part of the GI Joe toy line. Um, and Big Boa, the Cobra boxer, was going to be like the bad guy. Um, but because he signed a, a, a deal to do this, um, and I, I don't think it, I don't think it was Stallone. I think it was Hasbro going. Now we don't want to bring Rocky into GI Joe now because you've gone off and done this Rambo toy line with Coleco. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but. Uh they uh they use soft goods in this toy line as well. He's got the pants only in South America. Really? So this is yeah, South this, America. This stuff awesome. stuff's really rare. Hmm. Yeah. Um so I full disclosure, I've never seen this cartoon. I've seen all the Rambo movies, but I have never seen The Forces of Freedom. Retro yeah. Blasting did a great video on it though. See, so, I, I never had the cartoon when I was a kid. It was too violent for British TV. But really? I'd, I, yeah, well, we 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 didn't even get um, GI Joe on. TV. Yeah, Ryan. They in the UK they have like really strict standards, which is why Sergeant Slaughter is Sergeant Slammer. They had to oh, redub yeah. all his lines and stuff like that because like they couldn't say like I guess they called them trigger words back then. Uh, mm, yeah, you know, yeah, those, and, those and soft like, UK kids. You know, they had to. You know, they had to. Teenage you know, Mutant Ninja Turtles was is called um, Teenage Hero Mutant Turtles. Hero Turtles. Yeah. And no in the cartoon, sucks. they had to edit out all of the scenes of Michelangelo using his nunchucks because they were scared that impressionable kids in England would go and make their own nunchucks and would go and hit each other with them. The silly thing is we were doing that anyway because we were watching R-rated movies like Revenge of the Ninja when we were six because, <laughs> you know... Our but also, uh, didn't, yeah, Leonardo's, they were video. Leonardo's katanas were okay, but nunchucks weren't okay. Yeah, then I, they just had a thing about nunchucks, man. Just nunchucks. Dude, as a kid, I had a pair of nunchucks. So my my our next door neighbor was this old man, but he had a metal shop and a wood shop in the back of his house in this old garage. And so I told him what I wanted. I never said the word nunchucks because I knew he wouldn't do it. I said, I want two wooden rods with a rope in between. He's like, what are you going to use them for? And I was like, uh, to climb trees. I said, I'm going to throw it over the branch and then <laughs> use it to pull myself up. Right. He's Smart like, oh, okay. Kid. So I came home with these nunchucks and I was swinging them around and my parents were like, what, what is this? What are you? I was probably six, seven years old. Like they took them away and they said, where'd you get these? I was like, oh, I got them from Chet next door. They're like, oh, so they went over to his house and they were going to yell at him for giving me nunchucks. And he was like, he told me he was going to use them to climb trees. I don't know. Damn, Stop letting your kid that, come to my house. That poor guy under the bus. Damn. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Rotten kid. But <laughs> yeah. And then your dad threw a vacuum cleaner at your Batmobile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a few <laughs> years later, but yeah. Uh, this reminded me of the 1990 Zartan that I has, had as a kid. This, uh, Mad Dog. Mad, Mad Dog was, he all all these all these figures were cool, man. I, yeah. I love these figures. I mean the accessories they came with were awesome and their belts, the removable belts with weapon storage. Awesome. Yeah. I always wanted that on my figure weapon storage. So most figure lines that I had never had that. So I'd be like wrapping rubber bands around them and tucking the gun into the rubber band or the knife or whatever. But the Forces of Freedom line, they had it figured out. Uh, this is uh, Taylor Catherine Ann. So you're way more familiar with this than, than I yeah, am. Yeah, code, codename Cat. She's she's obviously inspired by the um, the Vietnamese agent that Rambo comes across in, in the movie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sort of sh shows him where the POW camp is. Rambo She's two. inspired by us. You, you can tell that some of the, not all of the characters, obviously there were no ninjas in Rambo 2, but some of the characters were, um, yeah, like, Storm like White Dragon. Um, yeah, some of the other characters were heavily inspired by, by the movie. Yeah, um, th this one also if, came in like a black variant, right? 
Yeah, so the white the white one was a good guy, um, who who was on the force of freedom, and Black Dragon was part of Savage, part of the bad guys. Um, you know, because having a white ninja and a black ninja, you know, being kind of related in a way and being on opposing, it was this really unique concept because it had never been done anywhere else, like G.I. <clears throat> Joe, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, or uh, mm -hmm. anything like that, yeah. It was a completely original idea. I mean, <clears throat> the backpack he comes with with this, like, bandolier of bullets strapped to hold it on. Look at all these guns he comes with. A and a machete? Yeah. So awesome. So that, that shield there, you put four of those Uzis in that shield, and then you press the button, and it winds around to the front, and he's literally got a shield with a stack of four Uzis. <laughs> he's got a mechanical claw. It's a cool toy. I mean, this is probably one of the most underrated toy lines of the 1980s. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would say so. But but there's some, some very controversial kind of things going on. Like, th this was, re apart from um, the Kenner Alien toy from 1979, I, I think this is, okay, you know, the Conan figures were earlier, but this was really the first time where they've gone, you know, Rambo is this R-rated movie icon. We're going to mm -hmm. turn it into a cartoon and a toy line. This was kind of the first one um, to do it. But then on top of that, you had the, the character of Nomad, which was the um, um, the uh, you know the Arabic terrorist. Um, that caused a lot of offence because of you know. I didn't pull a picture kind of him, racial profiling, I suppose. Um, right. You know, and, and, I, and I can understand, you know, there were these Muslim associations all over America who were protesting against this particular figure for that reason. Um, the Rambo metal lunchbox was the last metal lunchbox ever made for kids because something to do with Rambo being on it, all these parental groups in America. See, Bobby, you, you talk about us wimpy kids in England having Hero <laughs> Turtle, but over in America... Apparently, you lot were beating each other to death with metal lunch boxes. See, so I, I don't, to go I don't remember like that sort of stuff. I don't remember like soft kids or soft parents or like that kind of stuff. Um, you know, my I, my parents, it's like I had three older brothers. We, you know, we were four boys, so it was like, you know, we kind of we were kind of allowed to do what we want. You know, we wanted, and it's like, you know, obviously making Freddy Krueger claws and you know having nunchucks, but it's like. I don't know. I guess my parents weren't soft to the, the point where like they would complain about a toy. Like, I guess they had better things to do, like, you know, work and take care of us. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, it's, I don't remember any of that stuff. This I, is I, Nomad. I, I, I learned all of this stuff afterwards, you know. <laughs> this I was is the Nomad. watching Bushido Blade with my dad and watching, <laughs> watching people get decapitated when I was five. <laughs> Jeez. So this is that nomad uh, character that you were saying caused yeah. quite a bit of controversy because it was yep. a uh, stereotypical like Middle Eastern terrorist type of villain. Yeah, and it, it was just that you know you put you put one Arabic character in the line and oh he's the evil terrorist. It was uh, you know a little bit too on the nose, which I don't think you know in Reagan era America we really cared about too much. Um, Um, this is one that I would love to track down. Ooh. This is one of the coolest play sets ever. And I know, Bobby, you just uh, obtained it's one not it. too long ago. Yeah. Tony yeah. has one. This thing is awesome. This 100% holds up for your modern action figure lines today. I've been, you're... I've been waiting to do a photo shoot with action force figures on it because it's that good. Like, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I got it for research just because it's like, I obviously want to do a playset one day. And it's like, what do you do? How do you go about doing a playset? And it's like, I think, you know, people talk about the Checkpoint Alpha and those those mini G.I. Joe playsets. But it's like, I love what this is. It's a base. You plug the stuff into it. It's a watchtower. It's, you know, it's a barricade. Listen, I think just recreating this a little more modern for Action Force would be perfect. You know, it's a blow. It's a, it's a, a vacuum formed base, and it's you know, and it's a bunch of stuff to to build on top of that. I think it's it's super easy to 
to do. Um, but yeah, I got it for research and it turns out like I loved putting it together and, you know, seeing how cool it was for the time. But yeah, it still holds up. I'll buy four, Bobby. <laughs> I just wonder, like, I I, I want to be a lot. Tony, you might know. Do you remember what this retailed for back then? No. Okay. No idea. But, you know, I wonder, like, if, if I sent this playset to China and I was like, hey, cost this out now. What would it, I, I'd be very interested to see what it would cost this exact okay. like if I, if I didn't change anything about it, I said, do this, this exact playset. Tell me what the cost would be. And the same be materials and everything. Yeah. The materials, the molds. Yeah. All of it. So what, when you got this, I think we were on a live stream or maybe we we're just talking off the show. You were like, Ryan, you got to get this thing. This thing is awesome. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I got to get it. So I went to eBay. Oh no. <laughs> so they're like 500 it, bucks for this thing. Listen. Man. Yeah. I think mine was Are like three, really? three yeah. something. Yeah. Mine was like three something. It was a hardcore impulse buy. I think I bought it on the show. Like I was on the show and I went and I found when I bought it. Yeah. yeah. Cause, Cause I used a lot of parts from this um, in my action Force series one video. And I think we were mm -hmm. talking about it on the show. So like I, I had a, Loads of Rambo stuff when I was a kid. I didn't have this playset. I had the Defender Jeep. I had the Savage Strike Cycle. I had about eight of the figures. Um, but this is something I'd, I'd always wanted. So kind of when I started Analog Toys six years ago, I had a few of the figures, not my childhood ones, but I'd reacquired some of the figures. And I was like, I want to do, and I think it was probably after like Max FX or maybe my $6 million man video, I was like, I want to do a video about the Rambo toy line and I didn't want to do it without this playset. And I started looking around and back then a boxed one was like 200. A loose complete one was about 130 maybe. Um, so I bought loose complete, absolutely mint condition, 130 bucks. And what they're 500. Fuck, everything's gone up in price, man. Yeah. yeah. Back, back yeah. then you could buy mint carded Rambo figures for 30, $40 carded. Wow. Um, Pro that was probably not six anymore. Years ago. Yeah, everything. Every line is expensive now. But Ryan. <laughs> everything we talk about on this show goes up in price. Right? Yep. <laughs> That's it, man. We're, we're doing wonders for the secondary market sellers. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, um, I, go ahead, go Bobby. Ahead, no, you no I was just going to say, if you do get one, if you could find it with the instructions, I would highly recommend it. Okay. It's the the watchtower is a little cumbersome to put together if you don't if you don't know and the pictures aren't great that you can find online. I think I found a YouTube video where a guy kind of walks through it, um, but it's it's not the easiest thing to put together, especially with the winch and stuff. It's it's a little cumbersome. I've heard it's very hmm. delicate too. What type it of plastic is. they used? It is because it's it's um it's it's definitely um. um Shoot, it's not PVC. What's the other plastic? Um, maybe it is PVC. Polyurethane, ABS. Um, you know, uh, it's. I definitely, definitely be a little gingerly with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty. I'm almost positive. Uh, Retro Blasting's done a video on this line, including the, the uh, Savage Strike headquarters. Um, yeah, but, yeah, they didn't show you how to put it together. I, I remember when I got it, I didn't have the instructions, and Bobby's a hundred percent right. Like I, I, this is such a big playset that I packed this away. But of course, you know, I often will bring this out and use parts and pieces of it for any kind of six-inch figure review. Mm -hmm. So I've now kind of memorized how it goes together. But I remember putting it together for the first time without instructions, and I was looking around on, online for photos and. They weren't very helpful. It took me forever to to get this together properly. Well, just to put a cap on this whole thing, Bobby, if Action Force ever gets around to having play sets, just model it after this. <laughs> I'm telling take, you. Take it, heavy it's, inspiration. It's so good. Like I would do a more modern watchtower. Like on the on the mm -hmm. cover of the comic of issue three is a clip. She's hiding behind a tree, and there's a watchtower behind her. I would probably do something like that, a more modern watchtower, and then basically the same setup. It's it's kind of perfect. Um, 
you know, but, uh, you know, modernize some things a little bit. But if you did say you did this and it caught on and you made the the bases, you know, modular to the point where they can connect to each other and then you build onto that and then you have like an armory and then, you know, like a, a vehicle maintenance section. And before you know it, you have like four of them stuck together and they're all modular and you can make this bigger sort of place that I think that could be cool. Don't give too but much I wonder, away. I wonder, I wonder if something like this would be enough for people. Like there's so many really great photographers out there, but also like if you go on eBay, you know, like think of, of, of the, the dioramas that, that Ron Russo just sent to us. You know, I bought one of his on eBay and I remember it was very inexpensive and I'm like, man, you can get a really, really good diorama for not a ton of money, you know? So it's, I wonder, is it easier for people to just buy a professionally made diorama rather than, you know, a, a plastic playset, you know, because, um, you know, with, with plastic playsets, you got to you have to watch on cost and that sort of thing. So not every nook and cranny is going to be painted. Whereas if you buy a diorama from someone professional person that makes them really well, uh, you know, like uh, the, the one that Namai made for me, you know, that that I have uh, used for all my photography, it's like he painted every square centimeter of that thing. So that kind of thing might, you know, might be easier for people to just get something like that for their photography rather than a playset. So it's kind of like you, you don't really know until you test the market sort of thing. It's just a different time when we were buying, getting playsets. It's no one was making dioramas, you know, yeah. so it was like, that's where it, but now we're in a different, a different age now where, you know, people are making dioramas and there's so many people that can make really, really good dioramas. Um, you know, so who knows, who knows what the, what the, the future is for a, a play set at the six inch scale. I definitely think modular would be the way to go. For mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. That way you can kind of build out your own world. Um, all right. So our last uh, toy line that I want to talk, talk about tonight. Also has a cartoon, um, but ultimately, its original inspiration was a movie, The Toxic Avenger. The toy line called Toxic Crusaders. So, were you guys into this at all? I, I was. Uh, I didn't have, uh, I think what they call them, Toxie or Toxo. Toxie. Um, Toxie. I didn't have Toxie. My friend did, but I had the villain with the four arms. Um, but I remember like, I always wanted Toxie because he, you know, he's, he's the, the hero. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, great, great line. Um, very cool. You know, I think playmates made this. So anything playmates, playmates did was just so inventive and toyetic. Uh, they just made very like cool kid friendly things. And it's like, every inch of a figure has sculpted detail. Like look at the Ninja Turtles figures and mm -hmm. they, they just look great. Everything except obviously, except for the Dick Tracy line, but even that's a great line. So, mm -hmm. you know, this line's really, that's really debatable. good. Huh? That's debatable. That's another show. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was into this. I was also into the cartoon, but it, it was at a time where as a kid you watched everything, you know, yeah, Greg Fenstad, they did have a cartoon for this also, The Toxic Crusaders. Um, but totally fits in. Like, if you were into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. this fit right in. Same scale, same same kind of look, very bright colors. Um, and like you said, tons of sculpting detail. I mean, look at uh, the cru uh, Crusader Skater. <laughs> this thing yeah. is just wacky, man. It's out there. I never had any of these as a kid, but uh, a neighborhood kid, friend of mine, he had everything, first of all, but he had a bunch of this stuff. And um, I thought it was awesome. I never got to get into it. But um, so this, this was a little bit kind of past my time, but for sure, I don't imagine when I was a kid that I would have been into this anyway. <laughs> you were Dude. you were more into grounded stuff, more like, you know, yeah. the, the military stuff for sure. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if I would have got into turtles even. Oh, <laughs> it's 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 hard to say, like because it was a, a phenomenon, you know, and everyone was getting swept up in it. But um, I wasn't into turtles either. 
um, I, 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 I never cared for the for the cartoons, but when the first movie came out, I liked the movie. But I still, I, I never bought any of the toys. Don't you buy turtle stuff now, though? Movie stuff only. <laughs> Just based on the movies I like. And the yeah. comics. And the comics. But the, the original cartoon, and I that's another one that I had revisited. And that original cartoon is... Oh, bad. bad. It's bad. It's irritating. First yeah. movie holds up, though. It sure does. I it would is. argue that Secret of the Use holds up to a lesser extent, for sure. Yes, I, I agree. I watched it not that long ago. It does. Um, you know, what? I, I just kind of thought of this. I don't know if you guys had this thought also, but of the lines we're talking about, you, half of them had cartoons that followed up an R-rated movie. Now, I think even the ones with the cartoons, taking this one out of the equation, I think a lot of kids were aware that there was a movie. Like, Kids were aware there was a Rambo movie or a RoboCop movie. Yeah. And then, yes, they a cartoon accompanied them to validate having a kid's toy line. This line, the Toxic Avengers movie, was very obscure. So I think this is one of those rare occurrences where kids didn't even know there was a movie. Yeah, I think they just associated this with the cartoon. I had no idea what the movie was. I definitely knew there was a movie, but I didn't see it till much later, probably late nineties, early two thousands. Okay, it, it it was a trauma film, so it was like over the top violence, and, yeah, and yes. everything. Um, <clears throat> very, but it was very, like a B movie. It wasn't. So years movies. later, you went back to watch Toxic Avenger. What 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 inspired you? Years later. <clears throat> I hey, think it was. Can, let, hold on a second, Ryan. Tony, you can cut the shit with your your condescending tone there. There's no judge <laughs> judging here. We're all friends here. Stop judging, Tony. <laughs> well, Ryan, first of all, as a kid in the in the '80s and early '90s, I had no access to this movie. Like we didn't have cable TV, so it's not like I, I could watch it on HBO or Cinemax if it if it it, it, it was even on those networks. But um. I think I had a friend who was really into trauma films. And so I I rented it on VHS and watched it. And I was like, this is so corny, but I could kind of see the appeal. You know, I, I, I have no desire to revisit this movie or any of the old trauma films. But, but you um, haven't watched Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, that, well, see, now I, I refuse to watch Ghostbusters. Oh, you refuse to now? Yeah, we, we've I, built I it up too much that he can't watch it now. Yep. There's no way uh, I won't like it, first of all. and That's it was where Mr. my condescending tone was going, Bobby. Is like you, <laughs> years later, uh, you've, you've tracked down Toxic Avenger, but you haven't watched Ghostbusters. Well, I mean, that, look, the thing about Ghostbusters is that I... It was brought up on Infinity Equation that I had never seen. Actually, the first time I brought it up was on a stream with Jeff from world class bullshitters and Sal. And this was before I was on infinity equation, but I brought up that I'd never seen ghostbusters and I could tell that the other guys in the stream were actively angry at me. And then when I brought it up on infinity equation, same thing, like the chat was coming out. What? You've never seen. Go and so I was like, that's right. And now I'm not going to see it just because I was pissing them off. Hold <laughs> strong, the Ryan. Hold yep. Strong. Hold no, I'm no, sure I'll see it one of these days. I don't know what you're missing out on. See, I was giving Bobby a hard time about Conan and Destroyer for months and months and months. And then I went and watched it. I don't mention Conan and the Destroyer anymore unless it's in a in, in a good way because Bobby was right. See? <laughs> see? I'm telling you, all the people that get mad at me that I say Destroyer is better than Barbarian, go back and watch them. Go back. I dare you. Watch them like back to back. Grab him. Take him. <laughs> well, well, tentatively, that's going to be our three three POA episode during Iconicon. Is where the three of us are going to live do a Ooh. live watch of um, Conan the Destroyer. Tentatively, yep. it's not set in stone, Bob, but Bobby won't be drinking coffee for that one. Oh no! <laughs> and by oh, the no. way, by the way, Tony, if you can give me two hours at Joe Fest, just. Two hours of sobriety at Joe Fest. I will watch Ghostbusters with you there. 
Listen, well, like, Whoa. because because I got I got rooms for all of us. I think I have three rooms or something like that. We should just, we'll, one night, we'll all just watch it. All of us together, we'll just get a bunch of booze. We'll get rowdy in the hotel room, and we'll just watch Ghostbusters. Wait, 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 wait. You got me a room? Well, I got, I have three rooms, so. Okay, because you know. I booked a room. Oh, you did? Yeah, like months ago. Well, We'll, we'll and it's a good this. thing because it's sold out now. Yeah, I have three rooms, so that's six beds that I have. So, three yeah. rooms, and we only need one. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm having my own room, and I'm putting all you jokers together in one room. Put put uh, Tony with Mike. I don't think I want to subject Mike to that. <laughs> <laughs> We might have uh, to give Tony his own room. <laughs> all right. So, um, I, <laughs> go ahead, Tony. <laughs> yeah, the county jail, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully yeah. not. You, you can do a three POA live stream in the morning when you're bailing me out. <laughs> yeah. If if we do have to bail you out, I will live stream that. Hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. That'll be some great content. Tony's um, going to show up to Sunday of Joe Fest in like a bright orange prison suit. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna the bus is going to roll up like in the replacements. He's going to get off. They're going to unlock his shackles. He's going to come on in. I would much prefer like the black and white stripe. Like I was just going to say, what do they, what do they do in Georgia? Do they do the orange or do they do the black and white stripe? Because if you're just well, now, night nowadays, jail. nowadays America's so soft that they don't even do orange anymore because they're like, oh, we can't treat the prisoners like we can't like make them stand out so that people know they're prisoners. No, you break the fucking law. You're you're a prisoner. You should be you should have the black and white stripes. Yeah, you should um, be branded. Yeah. So I think now nowadays they wear like tan, like khaki, like they, you know, they look like they're just like an what average or something. Oh fuck! I'm not going to jail then. Fuck that. <laughs> it, yeah, they're like they're tanned. They're, it's like Dickies. It's like a Dickies shirt. Yeah, almost like Dickies pants or. Oh, someone pants. said orange is for where is that one? Orange is for county. White is for state. Okay. Well, we got some uh, we got some listeners here, huh? That have experienced some things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, super chat from. Officer. What's that? He's probably a correctional officer. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. I'm judging, Ryan. Damn. Okay. A world made of cardboard. Thank you very much for the super chat. He says Rambo Strike Headquarters was $29.99. And 19 Thank you for yeah. looking that up. 30 bucks. Yep. Damn. Um wow. Damn. that's crazy. But still, you know, $29.99 and 86. Well, minimum wage was probably three bucks. So yeah. that yeah. you know, I mean, it's all relative. It's that was all a lot relative. of money back then. Um, so that's our look back at Rated R Toy Lines Part 1. Part 2, feel free to submit suggestions to me if you'd like. I have a few that for sure we're going to cover in Part 2. Part 2 won't be our next show. We'll probably wait a little while before we do Part yeah, yeah. 2. We'll probably have uh, some other topics to talk about. Um, but we're a little bit over time, so we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Bobby, where can everyone find you? Valiverse everywhere, baby. Valiverse.com, Valiverse on Instagram, Valiverse on Facebook. And Action Force Series 2A, still some stuff in stock on Valiverse.com? 2A in stock, yep. 2A in stock. We 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 ordered a lot more than we did on Series 1 because, you know, we were judging based on the, the, you know, the rise in popularity of the line. So, you know... Um, if you're looking for some extra stuff, we do have, uh, so, you know, some stock that will hopefully last a little while uh, so that everyone can kind of kind of get in on what they need. Um, but, yeah, it's not going to uh, I mean, sellouts are great, but I don't want it to sell it as quickly as Series 1 sold out just because, you know, then people are, are looking for stuff. But if I can sell out by the time 2B rolls around and then you have your new stock of 2B, then we're all good to go. Yep. So go go get your duster. Go get your scarab. Get your yep. Sergeant Slaughter version two, and yep. get your roll, and get doubles because once you get them, you're gonna want to do part swapping and customization. That's, That's why right. I ordered. I ordered more. Tell me uh, about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony, 
Everyone can find you right here on Analog Toys YouTube channel. And where else? Um, June in Georgia County Jail. <laughs> there you go, uh, baby. We'll start uh, the GoFundMe June at, now. June at, at Joe Fest. It's the, what is it? What was the 25th, 26th? The weekend, yep. whatever. Last yep. weekend in June. Yep. Um, and then Iconicon starts on the Wednesday. We've got Iconicon. Um, oh, on the, let me get the date right. Let me get the date right. Time to be confirmed, but on Saturday, June the 11th, I'm doing a very, very special live stream to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Action Force. And I am going to be basically mediating a conversation between Bob Breakin and Bobby Valor. It's going to be amazing. We've got to lock in the time because we're in three different time zones, but um, um, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm, I'm doing a lot of prep work in the background with, you know, imagery. I might actually put together some short video clips and, you know, for some talking points and stuff. So um, that's going to be a fun one. I can't I will, wait for that. Know, do you know how nervous I'm going to be during that one? It's going to be bad. It's going to be like, like, you know, like I'm going to be like starstruck. Like I'm like me. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to be bad. I already know it. I know it's going to be bad. Uh, I, I, I was very nervous the first time I was going to meet Bob. And within two minutes, that all just went away. He's just a lovely guy. So. And remember, Bobby, he's a big fan of yours. He's a big fan of modern action force too. And, and, and that's, that's the thing. Like what, you know, and, and I've, I've emailed uh, with Bob several times, um, you know, so it's like, we've had conversations, but it'd be great to kind of talk to him almost in person. But the fact that like, he, you know, he, he's bought off on what I'm doing and he supports what I'm doing and uh, hashtag, this is his action force kind of thing. You know, that, that means a lot. And I can't wait to be able to, you know, share the screen with him talking about, you know, uh, action force and the history of it. It is, it is, it's going to be a very special event. And, um, it was, it, I was not going to do a, a 40th anniversary of action force. If it wasn't, you know, these two guys wanting to do it. And I spoke to Bobby, I emailed Bob and, and Bob came back straight away. And cause I was actually going to do it as part of iconic on and Bob came back straight away. And he went, there's no way I'm not going to be a part of this. But I'm actually on, he's going on vacation the, the week we're doing Iconic on. I'm like, well, let's just, we'll make it a standalone thing. Um, if, yeah. Bring the That's mountain good. to Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you, you and Michael <clears throat> did a 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, um, a week ago. Uh, if you guys um, haven't seen that, definitely go check that one out. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And since since you never plug it, Tony, everyone should go follow Analog Toys on Instagram at analog underscore toys. Yeah, that's inst Instagram's really like my my Desert Rat page. There you go. <laughs> awesome. I was going to change the name of it to Desert Rat, but I, I'm too dumb to figure that out how to do it. All right, uh, you guys can follow me at LaserPants81 on Instagram. Uh, follow Three POA on Facebook at Three POA Podcast. And subscribe to the new 3POA channel on YouTube. <clears throat> the link is in the description. So I think that's it. Uh, we'll see everyone in two weeks. Sounds Later. good. See ya. <laughs>